Good morning, and welcome to Kennesaw Family Life Church online services. We're so glad that you joined us today. But in case you haven't been online with us before, let me send it back in time to Jocelyn and I as we give you the tour. Hooray! That's we're, right. Yeah, exactly. We're so glad you guys are here. In case you haven't been here before or you just need a quick refresher, we're going to show you around the platform. That's right. This is our new 2024 tour. Yes. And we're we'll fresh. start... With, with the chat. That's right. The chat, which on your mobile device is going to be down here. That's true. And if it's on a tabletop kind of device, it's going to be over there. That's and right. In the chat. Underneath that chat, we start with a little prayer button. It's true. Prayer button. Request prayer. It's a little blue button. Mm -hmm. It opens up a separate chat window that's private. Yes. And uh, gives you the opportunity to talk to Pastor Larry or myself mm -hmm. uh, while nobody else can see you. Yes. So you can give your prayer request. That's why it says request prayer. And it is live and in person. That's right. In color, if you will. So there's tabs within the chat window, either at the bottom or the top. But you want to talk about the first tab? Yes. Yeah. Well, guess what it is? It's chat. Yay. <laughs> so that's where you just say hello when you come mm -hmm. on. And uh, then the next tab, the Bible. And so this will take you to you version where you can follow along, which is really great. And the last one is our notes tab. Exactly. Uh, that just gives you the sermon notes for the day. Mm -hmm. They are not printable, though. No. So if you want to print them, mm -hmm. Oh, well, then you've got to make use of our lovely links up there. Up here at the, the top. top left. So uh, there's one actually called Sermon Notes. If you click that, it'll take you to the website. And in the top right corner of the website will be a PDF file. It'll be the only one there. You click, you click on that, good heavens. And you can uh, print it out. You can edit it. It's great. You can. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the first tab there is our giving tab. Yes. Um, and that is, I mean, it, it takes you to the website giving page yes. so you can give in the offering if you want to mm -hmm. uh, it's a very quick easy setup so yes. no worries on that mm -hmm. and then our next link next one is volunteer so that'll take you to the volunteer page of the website it gives you more information about different volunteer opportunities it's also the place you go if a waiver needs to be filled out or yep. anything like that we always put the link if there's a waiver always 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 <laughs> Then the one after that, it was sermon notes, but after that <laughs> is our prayer tab All right. or link. Yes. It takes you to the prayer page mm -hmm. on our website and that's just a little Google form. You don't even have to put your name. You can mm -hmm. make it anonymous. Just tell us what you'd like to add to the prayer list. Mm -hmm. Pastor Larry and I get an email and we add it to our prayer list for yeah. Thursday mornings and or the, Monday through Thursday morning. Yeah, as I say, and then it gets prayed over every day, but especially in community Monday through Thursday. That's right. And the last one we have is the calendar. There's a lot of super great stuff in there. Um, I mean, it is the calendar as one would expect. It's what's happening this month. Exactly. I do believe that has been. And that is, that is the tour. Hello again. Welcome back. I hope that you now know your way around the screen and everything that's on here. Every week, we like to try and ask a question so that you can use that chat window over there. So this week, since today is Mother's Day, happy Mother's Day, everyone. We are asking a question, what is the best advice that your mom ever gave you? Um, so take a minute, talk about it in the chat, and we'll be right back with my answer.
it's me again. Did you answer the question in the chat window? I hope you did. So for my answer, I'm, I was kind of torn between a couple of different really good pieces of advice that my mom gave me growing up. Um, but I think I'm gonna land on, go ahead and make sure you plan on being 15 minutes early to everything. It's such good advice because then it gives you that wiggle room and you're never really late to anything. So sound advice from my mom. <laughs> Um, I hope we ha got to hear what your advice from your mom was. That is our question this week, our get to know you question as a church family. Again, to all of the women in here, happy Mother's Day. And um, let me tell you what's happening this week. So starting with tomorrow morning and all the way through Thursday morning every day at 714, we have our Zoom only prayer and we meet together for about 15 minutes or so. And that just is a great way to start your day off with devotion and prayer with your church family. Wednesday morning, directly following prayer, the men meet at Honeysuckle Biscuits and Bakery. That's in downtown Kennesaw. And they meet from 7.30 to 8.30, 9 o'clock, uh, just depending on how many people are there. And then next Sunday, giving you some warning here. Next Sunday is our hiking connection group and we will meet at desktop at 3.30 and we're gonna drive a little bit further this time than we normally do and do a nice hike out. So be on the lookout for that information. Give us a call if you'd like to join us so you can make plans to be there with us. Um, and then just so that you know, the city event is happening Friday this year. Uh, our movie night, our first of our movie nights is on Friday night instead of Saturday night this time. You can uh, see that it starts at six o'clock is when the event starts and the movie will start at sundown. That is also the backyard camp out. So people will be camping in a sectioned off part of Swift Cantrell. So you can find all the information about that on the City of Kennesaw's site and the Parks and Rec Department. We hope that you will join us for one of these things because God doesn't want you to do life alone. So get plugged in, get connected, and we are hoping to see you at one of those. Before we move on with the rest of our service, let me just take a moment to pray. Let's just pause and ask God to truly speak to us this morning. Pray with me now. Father, I'm so thankful for this beautiful day. Lord, for this church family, for all the people that you've called to be a part of it. God, I pray for each and every one right now. I pray that those that are watching this online, that you would just be with them, that they would sense your presence this morning. God, that you would draw us close to you because we were here. Help us to love you more. God, speak to our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship him with our music. God, we are so thankful for the ability to worship you together, even when we're not in the same place. And God, that's what we do this morning. We come together. Lord, wherever we're at, and we worship you with everything that we have, with everything that we are, God, we lift you up this morning. You are our God, and we'll proclaim it. Oh, Jesus. I cannot well be the same God that never fails, will not fail me.
my despair. You are my hope.
I'm caught up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to Thank you, Pastor Jennifer, for leading us in worship and just drawing us into God's presence. He's always here, but there's just something about worshiping together, music, and how it just draws us and, and focuses us on the presence of God. And so now we're going to take a minute and just pray for one another, pray for our community partners. It's Mother's Day. We're going to pray over our mothers as well. So we want to make sure that we lift one another up. If you have a prayer need, please click that prayer button on the chat area and you can if you hit prayer it's a private window it doesn't go out to anyone else and we'll pray for you if you want to just go to our website and email us that is fine as well uh, we pray throughout the week so we will add things to our prayer list so let's pray for one another and pray for the needs of each other we also want to pray over our community partners which for this month are uh, christ episcopal church it's also the crane elder law firm and then our missionaries for this month are the Couts family who serve in Columbia. So we wanna lift each one of them up and we're also gonna pray over our offering. This is also a part of our worship is giving to God and giving him our first fruits and saying thank you for providing for us and giving us the ability to work and earn money and the favor to do it well. So let's pray and ask God to meet these needs. Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for how you pour into us. We ask right now, Lord, that you would fill us with your spirit, that you would meet every need that we have. Lord, help us to be conscious of you. Help us to focus on you, Lord. When we get stuck in our minds, when that, the enemy battles against us, 
and we start to get focused on everything that's around us, help us to focus on you, Lord. And I pray that you would give us joy and peace and patience in the midst of trials and difficulties. Lord, I pray over those that are struggling in their bodies. Lord, we pray that you would bring healing over physical pain, arthritis, Lord, uh, cancer. We just ask that you would remove it. Lord, we pray that you would touch those that are battling with diabetes. Lord, we know that there have been some that have been in accidents and have been struggling. Lord, we pray right now for healing over their bodies. We ask that you would, uh, Lord, be with our event on Monday, the Words Are Heart event, Mental Health uh, Roundtable. Lord, we pray that as we discuss things with concerning our mental health, that we would learn and grow and, and become stronger in that. And Father, I pray that you would just guide and direct our finances today. Help us to be good stewards of what you've given us. Lord, we thank you for it. We worship you for what you've done in our lives. And, and Lord, I pray that we would be, that we would use what you've given us well. We ask right now that you would touch our community partners. Please be with uh, Christ's Episcopal Church. I pray that you would lead, guide, and direct them. Lord, their pastor, Ben, and, and his wife, Lord, I pray that you would just touch them right now. I ask that you would be with the Crane Elder Law Firm. Lord, be with them and, and bless their business. And Father, we ask that you would touch the Couts family, uh, that you would meet every need that they have, that you give them favor in Columbia, that uh, the funds would be there to provide for them. And Lord, we pray that lives would be changed because of them. Lord, we ask right now that you would keep your hands upon us, be with our community, be with our first responders, our mayor, our city council. And Lord, change us from the inside out today. We want to be more like you, and we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. We are starting a brand new series through the book of Colossians, or the letter to the church in Coloss. Uh, man, this is another one that Paul has written and we've read through and, and been through many of his letters. And I want to kind of explain this if you're new. We love to preach through books of the Bible. We love to hear what God is speaking to us through those books. And, and God led us to Colossians. We've done Colossians before years ago, and we're going to revisit it because every time we go back through the Word of God, we're at a different place in our lives. We learn something different. We, we grow. The Word isn't changing, but we're changing. We're growing. Hopefully, we're getting into a deeper relationship with God. And, and man, every time I go through something like this, God speaks something new to my heart. And I hope that's the way it is for you. That's why we can keep revisiting, keep going back and, and learning and growing. Well, today we're going to start out this series. Uh, this is a church that Paul did not start, but he had influence in. Um, he was in prison at the time. We think it was during his imprisonment in Rome, which if you were with our Roman series that we just wrapped up, we know that Paul was later in his life. He probably wrote this somewhere between his 60s and his 80s. So he'd been around a while. He had helped form the church. He was speaking wisdom. That was kind of his role as he was in prison. He was still coaching, mentoring, and parenting churches from a distance. And he would write letters when he would find out what was going on in a church. He'd write a letter to maybe correct some doctrine or to help them work through some issues or to make sure that they stayed on course. And this is no different. It's got a little different tone than some of the other letters because he's addressing something different. So let's jump into this. And I want to remind you that our first priority as Christians, and this is what Paul's going to remind us of as well, is to know Jesus, to be in relationship with him. And if you think about Matthew 22, which is our purpose, is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. That means to know Him. And then to love our neighbor as ourselves. But it starts with being rooted in Him. And we titled this series, Deeply Rooted. But I also want to point out Philippians 3, 8 and 9a. I just wanted to finish the sentence. It's like the first three words of verse 9. There's much more to verse 9, but it isn't relevant to what... Well, it's relevant, but not relevant to what what we're talking about right at the moment. Verse 8 says this, Yes, everything else is worthless compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. 
For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. It's about knowing Jesus, getting deeply rooted into him. That's our purpose. That's our number one priority as Christians. It's the most significant thing we can do. So we titled this message about deep, being deeply rooted. It comes out of Colossians 2, verse 7. Paul actually says this, Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. We're using that as kind of like the baseline for the whole series. We're going to talk about other things, but it's all going to be pointed to growing in our relationship with God and in relationship with others. And really, that's what our spiritual lives are about. So we're going to see how that relates together and what it means on this journey as we grow deeply rooted in Him. So let's go to chapter 1 of Colossians and let's read the first 14 verses and then see what Paul's speaking to us out of this. Verse 1, this letter is from Paul, chosen by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and from our brother Timothy. We know that Paul mentored Timothy. Timothy was a young pastor. We are writing to God's holy people in the city of Coloss, who are faithful brothers and sisters in Christ. May God our Father give you grace and peace. We always pray for you and we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all of God's people, which come from your confident hope of what God has reserved for you in heaven. You've had this expectation ever since you first heard the truth of the good news. The same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard it and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker. He is Christ's faithful servant. He is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of his will and give you spiritual wisdom and understanding. Then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you'll be strengthened with all His glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to His people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. Love this passage. And the first thing, our roots are in Jesus. That's, the, that's where it starts. That's where it begins. We're deeply rooted in Jesus. And that's what I love about even go back to 10. He says, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit while you grow and as you learn to know God better and better. That's why he says we, we're praying that God will strengthen you and that your endurance and patience will grow and that you'll be filled with joy and thanksgiving. If you look at those last few verses, Paul is saying this is the goal. This is what we want. We're praying that God will grow his fruit in your lives, that you'll be deeply rooted, that you'll know him better. So our roots are found in Jesus. That goes back to remembering why we do what we do. Why are we digging roots into him? Why are we pouring ourselves in? It's because of the grace that he's given us. It's because of the hope that we have in him. It goes all the way back to the beginning. When you think about what Jesus has done for us, that we have hope in heaven, that we have hope that we are His. That's the point of all this, that we are His and we are deeply rooted in Him. You know, whenever I talk to somebody about what they're trying to accomplish or where they're going in life, uh, whether it's been as a health coach or coaching other churches, I always talk about remember why you do what you do. Jennifer and I moved our family here based on the Holy Spirit leading us almost 19 years ago 
because God gave us a vision to pastor a community, to pastor this community. And we aren't arrogant enough to think that every person in Kennesaw and the surrounding areas, that we're going to be their pastor. But what that means is, is that we're going to love and pray for a community and that we're going to love and pray for those that we encounter that God has put into our path. That we're going to do everything that we can to partner with other churches and others that want to see this community grow and to move people from where they are towards Jesus. That's, that's our why. That's why we do this. That's why we get out there and serve and do food pantries and spend time with people and and come together and worship on Sundays. It's because of the passion that God's given us for this community, because we want to see people know Jesus. We're deeply rooted in that. Our foundation is deeply rooted in that. Our roots must first go down into Jesus. And that made me think of the parable of the sower. We've, We've talked about it a lot. I'm not going to go into the whole parable. But I do want to read Matthew 13, verses 3 through 9, where the illustration is. It says, Listen, a farmer went out to plant some seeds. As he scattered the seeds across the field, some fell on the footpath, and the birds came and ate them. Other seeds fell on shallow soil with underlying rock. The seeds sprouted quickly because the soil was shallow, but the plants soon withered under the hot sun. Since they didn't have deep roots, they died. Other seeds fell among thorns that grew up and choked out the tender plants. Still other seeds fell on fertile soil that produced a crop that was 30, 60, even 100 times as much as had been planted. Anyone who, with ears to hear should listen and understand. See, this illustrates, with planting a seed, this illustrates that, hey, when a seed gets, goes into the soil, you know, the footpath, it's hard. The seed didn't have a chance to go in, so birds came and ate it. It just didn't go anywhere. But the other seeds, they found soil that they could go down into. And if you know anything about planting seeds, the first thing that comes out is the roots. And the roots go down and they anchor that. Long before the shoot comes up out of the ground, the roots have to go down. That's why I like this illustration. He talks about the shallow soil that it's not deeply rooted and then it was it soon died it withered because it it wasn't down where the nu- nutrients are that's why we have to be deeply rooted in Jesus because we don't want to wither and die we want to grow and to produce but it starts with us first being rooted in him that's where everything starts that's where our foundation is is to get our source of strength from Jesus. Think about it. Plants, when you, when you plant something, you put in the right kind of soil to get the nutrients out of the ground, and that nutrients produces a healthy plant. So you have to have the right nutrients and all of those things to help it to grow. We're going to be rooted into something. There is going to be something that pours into our lives that's going to come out of us. So if we fill our lives with stuff that is contrary to the Word of God, that's what's going to come out of us. If we allow bitterness and hate towards somebody else for our lives to take root in that bitterness and hate, that's what's going to flow out of us. That's why we have to remember the grace and the love of God and what Jesus has taught us and learned from His words, and then we get deeply rooted into that. That's what's important because that's what we want to come out of us. So our roots in Jesus lead to our mission. That's the second thing. Our roots in Jesus lead to our mission. And I want to look at verses 6 through 8 again. It says, This same good news that came to you is going out all over the world. It is bearing fruit everywhere by changing lives, just as it changed your lives from the day you first heard it and understood the truth about God's wonderful grace. You learned about the good news from Epaphras, our beloved co-worker, He is Christ's faithful servant. He is helping us on your behalf. He has told us about the love for others that the Holy Spirit has given you. So this this good news that was planted in the hearts of the church there, of the people there in Coloss, had taken root, had sprouted, and it was spreading out. It was going. It was accomplishing the mission. So Our purpose is to love God and love others, out of Matthew 22. Our mission is to make disciples, to move people from where they are towards Jesus, to help them to grow, to be planted in Him. And that comes from us first being planted there. Think about farming. I love the illustration. 
because you plant one seed and out of that seed comes much, much fruit. So take an apple seed. You plant an apple seed, you grow an apple tree, and that apple tree, that one seed produces hundreds of apples. But it first has to grow, it first has to be rooted and then grow and become strong and then it'll produce that fruit. Well, that's what our lives are doing. We're being rooted in Jesus and what's being rooted in us is going to come flowing out and it's going to produce fruit. It's going to draw people towards Jesus. We're going to be disciple makers because our lives are deeply rooted in Him and in His Word and who He is. It's going to flow out of us. That's what the Holy Spirit does. These seeds have been planted. They take root. They begin to grow. Then they produce fruit. That's the beauty of all this. Our mission comes out of being rooted deeply in Jesus. Whatever you're rooted in is what is going to flow out of you. That's why the things that we're passionate about the things that we love to do, and it can be hobbies and all of those other things. What do we do? We share those experiences with others. Jennifer, I love to travel. We love to share that experience with other people. I love to mountain bike. I love to share that experience with other people. Um, some people love movies. They love to share that experience with other people. That's a part of who we are. And, and in that same way, if our foundation is rooted in Jesus, we're going to share that experience with them. Not by just preaching and beating them over the head. It's going to flow naturally out of us. It's going to bear fruit. And the beauty of it is, is what we're excited about, people that resonate with it will be excited about it as well. They're going to learn from us. That's what it means to be a disciple maker. We're teaching and showing people that. So these farming illustrations, remember most people understood farming. Even in the cities, they understood how things grow. Paul used farming illustrations. Jesus used farming illustrations. And, and we talked about this. We talk about it a lot. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. It talks about what the Spirit grows in us. And that's what flows out of us. That's the fruit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those are the things that the Holy Spirit, when we're deeply rooted in Jesus, those are the things that the Holy Spirit grows in us flows out of us. It's what draws other people towards Christ. That's what all of this is about. We have to be deeply rooted. This is the foundation. I know we hear this a lot, but why do we hear it a lot? Why was it written so many times in Scripture? It's because it's so foundational. It's something we have to get drilled deep into our heads. I get excited about it because if we would just grab this concept, we will change this world through the power of Jesus, lives will be changed. They'll get to know who Jesus is. Not because we're great preachers, not because we have a great show, not because we have all this stuff, but because we're deeply rooted in Him and what flows out of us is the love and grace of God. That's what people want. People want to know that God loves them and cares for them. That He's not just waiting to, to discipline us and to to tell us how awful we are or how we miss the mark. The law tells us that. He gave us the law to show us where we miss it. What Jesus does, he has his arms open and says, hey, come to me. Be deeply rooted in me and allow my love to flow out of you. You're my creation. I want to fill you with my love. So we have to grow in the things of God. We have to be deeply rooted in him. So our last thing is this, we need each other for our roots to grow. We need each other for our roots to grow. And this is based off of verses 9 through 14, and, and we've read these already, but look. So we have not stopped praying for you since we first heard about you. We ask God to give you complete knowledge of His will and to give you spiritual wisdom and understanding then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord, and your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. All the while, you will grow as you learn to know God better and better. We also pray that you'll be strengthened with all the glorious power so that you will have all the endurance and patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in, his in, in the inheritance that belongs to His people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son. 
who purchased our freedom and forgave our sins. A huge part of having strong roots is having other people in our lives loving on us and praying for us. We're never meant to do this journey alone. And think about roots that go down in the ground. If you just do a solitary plant, it's going to go down in those roots. But you could pull that plant out pretty easily. But if you plant plants together, the roots grow down and their, 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 their roots intertwine. Then they don't get pulled out so easy. They grow together. That's what the church is. It's a community of believers planted together helping each other to grow and sustaining each other during difficulties, trials, and tribulations. Remember, throughout the Gospels, throughout Paul's writings, Peter's writing, James's writings, we're going to go through trials, we're going to go through difficulties, our lives aren't going to be perfect and rosy and everything's just going to be awesome because we serve God. We're going to go through difficulty. And the only way we don't get pulled out by the enemy, the only way we don't wither and die is that our roots grow deep and that they're intertwined together. We're never meant to do this journey alone. We need each other. That's what I find so fascinating about the church, the early church and, and the study of the church. You hear me talk about how God never called us to start churches. He called us to make disciples. But making disciples, the natural outcome of that is church because we need each other. Look at Acts 2, 42 through 47. This is the birth of the church. This is the first place that the Holy Spirit's been poured out on the apostles. Peter preaches this message. Thousands of people accept this message, and the church is formed. And this is what it says. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, and to fellowship, and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. A deep sense of awe came over all of them, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possessions and shared the money with those in need. They worshiped together in the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper, and shared meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. Each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. Two other times in the book of Acts, you see that same thing happening as new communities sprouted up. Their roots grew down together. They, they shared meals together. They shared their money together. They, they lived in community with one another. Now, at the same time, there were people like Paul before Paul came into relationship with Jesus that was trying to wipe them out. How did they survive? Through the grace of God, through the Holy Spirit, and being deeply rooted together, praying for each other. That's the beauty of the church. Have you ever tried to pull out a plant that's intertwined like that? You can't do it. It's, it's hard. That's why it's so important. I love this image of the church. Our job is to make disciples, not churches. The church is the community that comes together to worship God, to learn and to grow and to pray for one another and to care for each other. I'm really excited about this journey that God's going to take us on over the next few weeks as we drill our roots deeper in Jesus, as we grow together in Him. So what are some of the key elements to putting down deep roots? Obviously, studying the Word of God in prayer, it's always a foundational thing. The more we get to know God, the more we understand, the more we grow and the deeper our roots go. Praying, just, man, spending time with Him, getting to hear His voice, but then praying for each other. And then spending time together as a community. Look, we're intentional about how we do our church. We're different in a lot of ways. For those of you that only come online, you see just this little clip. It's much different in person because we get to interact with each other on a different level. I wish that everybody could come and just be with us every day. And I understand that, that some, for some of you, it's just not possible. But that's why we do things like our game nights and uh, our hiking groups and our craft groups and things that... Pastor, we don't study the Bible when we get together. No, because we study on Sundays together. What we do in those days is we're growing our roots together. 
We're lifting each other up. We're building relationships so that we can truly become the church. See, if you just come to church and you slip in and you slip out and you don't ever develop that relationship or get connected to the community, it's easy for you to get plucked out. It's easy for the enemy to isolate you. Think about it this way. How does a wolf kill a sheep? He first separates it from the herd. Because together, together there, there's power. The, the sheep, even though they're, they're kind of defenseless, they can, can guard against the, the wolf. But if he can get one separate, get one weak, it's easy for him to devour it. We don't want to see anyone devoured. We want to see you grow and be strengthened, strengthened together. That's why community is so important. So the first priority is to be deeply rooted in Christ, and the second is to be rooted together for our roots to intertwine so that we can lift each other up, encourage each other, and help each other to grow. I'm excited about this series. I'm excited about what God's going to do in our lives. I want to pray over you, and I want to pray that God will help you to, to, to grow firm in your roots in Him and to love on those around you. Let the fruit flow out so that they too can come and be planted into Jesus. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for what you're doing. Lord, we ask that you would help our roots to grow deep into you, that you would, Lord, nurture us and fertilize us and help us to grow. And Lord, we thank you for what you're going to do in us through this series and we thank you for the lives that are going to be changed by the fruit that pours out of us. Lord, help us to grow closer to you and to each other. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We love you, and we'll see you again next time. Hi, guys. Thanks for staying with us through the whole service today. Remember, we don't close that chat window right away. It stays open for you to fellowship with one another and stay connected. So feel free to stick around and chat with each other and with me. <laughs> and uh, we hope to see you at one of our events this week or at the city event. Let me remind you what those are, starting with tomorrow. Today we have nothing planned because it's Mother's Day. So I hope you're doing something with one of the special women in your life. Tomorrow at 714 and every morning through Thursday, we will meet on Zoom only for our morning prayer together. And then Wednesday morning, directly after prayer, the men will meet at Honeysuckle Biscuits and Bakery from 7.30 to 9. And then next Sunday is our hiking connection group and we'll meet at the church probably at 3.30 still, but maybe a little earlier. So go ahead and text us for that information. And then this weekend, Friday night, again, it's Friday night, not Saturday night, is the first of the Parks and Rec movie series. Um, that's gonna be at six to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. is right around sunset. That's when they'll start the actual movie. And then that whole evening, they have a place sectioned off for the backyard camp out. So we hope to see you at one of these things this week. We love you guys, we're praying for you, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye. <laughs>